Hi, I'm Stuart Grace Green. I'm the Director of Research and Education at iBeam, the Institute for Biological, Energetic, and Alternative Medicine. And I'm going to talk with you a little bit today about the science behind OSIRA. Um, I'm always a little surprised when people ask me if I believe in energy, if I believe in energetic medicine. My background is in astrophysics and cosmology, and asking a physicist if they believe in energy is a little bit like asking an atmospheric scientist or a meteorologist if they believe in the wind. It's a little bit like saying, I can see the rain coming down, I understand how it can cause floods and, and water the crops, but this wind thing is invisible. Well, of course, energy is invisible until you do something that lets you see its effects, and we're going to be talking today about how a Syra is really an instrument for in great detail visualizing the patterns of biological energy in the body. Now, before we go into the science, I just want to tell you a little bit about GTEC, the company that makes Asira, and its founder, uh, engineer Joe Galloway. And before pioneering Asira technology and introducing it in 2002, Joe was instrumental in the design and engineering of a lot of the other systems that you may be familiar with, going back to the Acupath 1000 in 1978, and then through an entire lineage of better and better systems, the Intero, the Profile, the Data Touch, the Biopath, the Listen system that I know a lot of people have used, and in more recent years, the Biomeridian systems, the MSA, the MSA21, and the MSA Pro. So given that each one of these systems represents incremental improvements, deepening of knowledge and deepening of wisdom about understanding how to look at the energy systems of the body and interpret them clinically, Asira is really a 10th generation technology, and it incorporates all kinds of innovations that make it actually the most objective, the easiest to use, the most clinically useful and accurate system that we've had the privilege to work with. So what is energy? In its simplest sense, energy just really represents the ability of any physical system to change to go from being one way to being some other way. And that's really all it's about. Now, energy manifests in two very different ways. First of all, energy manifests in a way we're familiar with as force, as the thing that generates movement. And the interesting thing about this, what I like to call the first octave of energy, is that it's independent of scale. It doesn't matter if we're talking about the violent explosion of a supernova in deep space out in another galaxy somewhere, or if we're talking about the movement of a molecule across a cell membrane being pushed by a single electron from a single ATP molecule, this first octave of energy is about force and power. The second manifestation, the second octave, if you will, of how energy manifests is as information. A very tiny amount of information can be modulated, taking its intensity up and down, or taking the speed with which it vibrates faster or slower, and this can become a very potent carrier for an extraordinary amount of information. Now, if you look at what takes place in the body, some of it is force and movement. Of course, we have metabolic processes that turn food and our nutrients into cellular energy so that we can move and talk and think and do all the things we need to do. But once you get past those layers, most of what's going on with energy in the body is happening at a much subtler scale and is involved with the modulation of the shape of energy to create regulatory patterns of information. And virtually everything in the body works by subtly modulating small but highly precise forms of energy. That's what Asira is about. That's what we're going to be talking about. One of the things that's very useful to be able to do is to take this otherwise invisible energy and somehow bring it to our eyes. Seeing is believing, not just for our own edification, but also for the patients and clients who'd like some way of relating to this technology. So one of the things we do here at the clinic is we use different systems for visualizing the human bioenergy field. An analogy that really seems to speak to a lot of people is that Doppler radar, like you see on the TV weather reports at night, let us visualize the shape 
of energy in the atmosphere. We said before that the wind is invisible. Well, here's an image of Hurricane Katrina, and through this technology of Doppler radar, you can very clearly see the spiral vortex of the, uh, of the hurricane system. So we like to use instruments like gas discharge visualization and surface scanning electromyography to do a very similar thing, to create accurate, scientifically and clinically meaningful visualizations of the human bioenergy field. Let me give you some examples. First of all, using a technology called GDV, gas discharge visualization, we can create a picture of how physical energy is flowing around the envelope of the body, what in various ancient traditions has been called the aura of the body. Here we're actually taking a measurement and a visualization of what this aura really is made of. And in this case, you can see that there's a huge gap around this subject's head. And they were reporting problems in their head, difficulty with concentrating, pain in the head, and so forth. And applying a purely bioenergetic therapy, a few moments later, we took the image again, and you can see that that aura has filled in completely. It's terrific to have a tool like this because people can see this and recognize that something is profoundly shifting. Even though we're not using drugs, we're not using surgery, we're changing the information flow in the body by very consciously and deliberately changing the energy patterns, the patterns of energetic movement. Here's another example. This subject reported uh, extreme physical exhaustion after a very hard work day, feeling of pressure and pain at the top and the sides of the head, tremendous difficulty concentrating. And you can see that in the aura, there are two large V-sized gaps on the sides and lower down in areas that represent the liver and the colon. Uh, there are also holes in this energy field. Now, with only a small bioenergetic program, actually in this case, taking the structure of their own bioenergy field and setting up a feedback loop, uh, modifying the waveforms and pulsing it magnetically back into the body, you can see that the next image shows that the cocoon of the aura has filled in completely. Look at that again. This is how it looked with its various gaps. And then rolling forward, you can see the energy system is now much more continuous. The energy around the head appears better balanced. And the subject, after only about 20 seconds of the treatment, reported a profound sense of relief. The headache was gone. Mental clarity was restored, a deep feeling of relaxation. Now, whenever we talk about energy in the body, the concept of frequencies and waveforms comes up. And for a lot of people, that's kind of a mysterious thing. It's almost as though there's, a, there's some kind of divine code book somewhere that certain frequencies correspond to certain things. And I think it's important to demystify that concept a little bit. So I want you to picture what happens when we pour water onto a small sponge. Obviously, the sponge is going to absorb some of the water, but after a little while, it's going to become full, and the water is going to start to pour through. Here's a little video of that. Water is being poured on the sponge. And after a few seconds, the water simply pours through. The sponge can't hold anymore. Now, the total time until the sponge saturated was about four seconds. Obviously, if we use a larger sponge, the exact same thing is going to happen, except that the bigger sponge can hold a lot more water, and therefore there's going to be a longer period of time before it saturates and the water starts pouring through. And here you can see, after the same three or four seconds, the water isn't pouring through. The larger sponge is containing it. And it goes on and on, lots more water pouring into the sponge. And in fact, eventually that sponge is going to saturate. And now the water begins to pour through. In this case, the total time until the sponge saturated was about 17 seconds. So why am I showing you big and little sponges? And the reason is that the cells of the body are really a lot like these sponges, but instead of holding water, they're holding energy. I don't mean a mysterious form of energy. I mean they're physically holding biochemical, electrical energy in various forms. And healthy cells have a capacity to hold much more energy than unhealthy cells. And cells that are under constant stress 
are already overloaded. They're already holding more energy than they can handle, and they saturate more quickly. So if you inject a little bit of extra energy into the body, there's going to be a measurable time delay, just like the sponges, before the energy pours through again. And by measuring this time delay that's called phase angle, you can determine whether the cells that you're looking at are healthy and have a big energy storage capacity, or whether they're depleted, or whether they're stressed. That is, they're already overloaded with excessive energy. And this is a picture. You can see that the energy going in in the red wave is shifted in time, coming back out again. And by measuring that shift, that phase angle, we can learn a great deal about the health of the cellular systems. Now, there are medical studies that link general health and athletic performance and capacity for concentration and longevity to having a very high phase angle. And conversely, there are some diseases like sickle cell anemia that are very easy to correlate with low phase angles that indicate poor cellular energy capacity. In fact, a few years ago, there was a large-scale study in Africa of sickle cell anemia, and it was very expensive and very difficult to draw blood, and they found that they could use phase angles reliably to determine the incidence of sickle cell anemia in the population. Now, because in the living body, the cells and the tissues are always engaged in exchanging energy. They release energy, then they recharge again as they do their biological work they naturally set up patterns of vibration. They set up patterns of oscillation. So let's look at a, a little bit more complex analogy that matches what happens in the body better. It's similar to the sponges, but it takes it one step further because in this example, we're going to link the filling and the discharging of energy into a continuous cycle. And this is going to show us why the movement of energy in the body is naturally organized into frequencies, into different characteristic signatures of oscillation. This is a famous bamboo Chinese fountain. Sometimes these are built very large and put in gardens to scare away deer. And you can see that as the little bamboo cup fills up, it reaches a point where it can no longer hold any more water and it dumps out. Because the body is always moving energy, it's always going to set up exactly these kinds of patterns of oscillation. Now, if you have a simple oscillation, that can be characterized by a single simple frequency that's just simply vibrating in whatever the medium is. Just like we had with our fountain, there was a constant frequency of filling and dumping, and filling and dumping, and filling and dumping. But in natural systems, in complex organic things, including all living organisms, the situation is quite a bit more complex. The oscillating patterns we're interested in here have internal structure. They're not single, simple frequencies. And therefore, we have to use what are called waveforms to characterize them. Here's a picture of a comparatively simple waveform, but you can see that it's a lot more complex than just a simple frequency. If you had a mathematically perfect waveform, it would continuously repeat, but within each repetition, it would have various complex internal components. And there is a mathematical technique called Fourier analysis that shows that any repeating waveform can be reduced. It can be broken down to a finite mixture of simple frequencies. So in that case, here's our original waveform. And we see that it's actually made up by superimposing, by combining three simple sine waves. They add up to make the more complex wave form. So once you've done that, once you've broken down your complex wave form into some number of simple waves, you can then store that information just in a very simple numerical array and then use simple oscillators to put the waves back together again just like addition and subtraction are complementary processes, this process, which is called Fourier synthesis, is the exact complement of the Fourier analysis. This is what lets devices like the Asira store arbitrarily complex waveform information that corresponds to things going on in the body and actually to do it quite simply and very, very accurately. So, if you gather together the collection of all of the body's possible modes of oscillation, they make a, a kind of a, 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 an archive of vibrational fingerprints. And these fingerprints can be analyzed, they can be stored, they can be compared 
with certain baseline values and they can be modified at will. It gives you an effect of vibrational language for what's taking place in the body. And then these vibrational signatures can even be imprinted onto some kind of physical carrier medium. We can turn them in effect into a homeopathic remedy that can then alter and correct and modify the vibrational patterns that are taking place inside the body. The Asire device, in fact, imprints information from the session in exactly this way. So what is the role of resonance? What do we mean by resonance? And in fact, if you look at the name Asira, the A-S-Y part comes from the same root as the word asylum, which means a place of healing, a place of retreat and regeneration. And then the R-A stands for resonance analysis. So when we looked at our sponges and then just now at the bamboo fountain, we saw that the body stores and releases energy in an organized way. It organizes around repetition and it naturally organizes around complex waveforms. And each of the potential oscillations, each of the possible waveforms can be induced to reveal itself in a clinical setting and give us information through this process called resonance. Now, for us, the most familiar form of resonance is probably the experience of pushing a child on a swing. And we know that when we time the push to the natural frequency of the swing, to the natural oscillation that has to do with the length of the chain and the whole setup there, we create a resonance that amplifies the swing's motion. If we were to push in a way that didn't resonate, that didn't match with the natural oscillation, we would actually disturb and we would damp out the movement of the child on the swing. And then nobody would be happy. Uh, another way of looking at this is that a tuning fork, even when it's resting, even when it's not vibrating, has a potential set of intrinsic resonant frequencies. And this has to do with the tensile strength of the material and the shape into which it's forged and so forth. And then when it's struck, when it's hit against the wall or hit against the knee, it takes that blast of random mechanical energy and because of its own intrinsic nature, it reorganizes it into a well-ordered pattern of vibration. Now, if you had another tuning fork that had the same potential vibration because it had the same structure and you put it nearby, the active energy of the one that was already vibrating would induce a resonance in perfect sync in the second tuning fork. The Asira works in exactly that same way. Many times every second, the Asira system actually sends out a waveform a little ping to the body that asks the question, is this a biological energy pattern that's relevant for you? Here are the ones that have to do with potential disturbances or proper function of organs. Here are the ones that are related to environmental toxins, to pathogens, and so forth. And then the probes in the subject's hands measure the electrical response to whichever of these waveforms that the body is pinged with by the Asira device actually induced a resonance. Change the electrical activity in the body, just like the resonance that's induced when we push the swing or in the second tuning fork when the first one rings the same way. So one way of looking at the Asira is that it's really like a sophisticated kind of lie detector. But instead of asking questions like, where were you on Valentine's Day in 1929? it actually poses its questions as energetic waveforms. And then those waveforms, those questions that have been put to the body as energetic patterns, the ones that resonate with the subject's field will create measurable electrical changes that are recorded through the probes. So while the measurements that are done by the Asira are very much more specific, than what's coming from the lie detector. It's more like the discussion we had of phase angle and cellular energy storage and release and the vibrational patterns that are set up. It's pretty much the same concept. The Asira will continue to ping the subject's body with all of the different possible waveforms associated with organ function, associated with different emotional patterns and distress patterns, associated with toxins and bacteria and viruses and so forth, and some subset of those pings will resonate. It will be like the tuning forks that are already present in the body that recognize that pattern and respond. 
Now, each time there is a dysfunction that's noted, each time there is a resonance of this sort, the system will then look in its extensive internal repertoire of remedies, of nutritional remedies and nutraceuticals and homeopathic signatures that have been encoded, and it looks for patterns that will neutralize and balance and restore the proper waveforms. Now, this is very interesting because a lot of other systems have a repertorization. They have basically a dictionary inside of them of all kinds of different remedies, but they're not examining it in real time. They will determine, for instance, that there's a liver dysfunction, and then they will simply statically look up, okay, well, here are 12 things that are good for the liver. Let's tell them about those. The Asira does something that's far more sophisticated and far more dynamic. It will actually take the energy signature for each of the remedies that it has in store and will test them against that dysfunction, for instance, of the liver and find the ones that in real time today for this person create a balancing. And as it goes through all of the different dysfunctional energy patterns and it finds 5 or 10 or 15 or 20, not only will it find the remedies whose signatures help to regularize and restore and balance them, but it will also look at all of those disturbances and all of those remedies together in context and make sure they all harmonize. If it brings in a remedy that's effective for one of the dysfunctions, but then that remedy doesn't harmonize with the other ones that have been chosen, it goes back to its repertoire, it chooses another one, and it will only deliver a final set of recommendations in which every piece is on point, every piece is effective, and every piece is in resonance with every other one. So I like to say that the idea that our internal state can cause physically measurable reactions isn't a new idea. Here's Pinocchio, and of course he had his built-in lie detector. So this notion that the body responds in ways that can be observed and detected and measured based on external stimuli like asking questions, whether they're verbal questions that are truth or lies, or whether they're energetic questions, we can measure the responses. Now, another key to the effectiveness and the accuracy, the tremendous accuracy that we've observed clinically, is the way that Asira calibrates to each individual uniquely. And we like to call the explanation of this the tin can telephone effect. Let me show you what I mean. If you imagine two people talking over a tin can telephone, you know that the string between the two tin cans has to be tight. If it's not tight, then no sound is going to be transmitted and there's going to be no conversation. The person speaks into the first can, the can resonates, but that resonance is then not carried by the string. On the other hand, if the string is pulled tight, then the sound energy that vibrates the tin can makes the string vibrate in resonance with it and you have a completed circuit. In the first few seconds of each Asira test, the device does exactly the same thing. It performs the bioelectrical equivalent of tightening the tin can telephone string. It does the equivalent of making sure that there is a completed circuit that information can flow through. So why does this effect make such an important difference in the accuracy of the results? Very simply, when you send bioenergetic waveforms into the body, you need to know that they're reaching their intended targets, that each system that you're attempting to inquire about uh, through resonance actually gets engaged and successfully resonates and reports on its status. Otherwise, you're not getting an accurate reading. So because each person's electrical characteristics are somewhat different, and in fact the same person's characteristics can be different at different times, you need a specific intensity of the pinging waveforms to ensure that you have that tight string, to ensure that every possible resonance is actually being activated. And without this individual calibration, and we don't know of any other system that provides it in this way, you don't really know if the responses that you're getting are meaningful or if you're just hitting the equivalent of a loose string. So because of a host of refinements like these, among many others, we find that the Asira device really gives us a level of clinical accuracy and consistency, not just in an individual test, but when you look at the trajectory of tests and therapy based on those tests over a period of months. 
And because this testing process is completely objective, it's completely operator independent, you get consistent and reliable results. It doesn't matter if you have a PhD in biochemistry or you're a cardiothoracic surgeon or if you're a bright kindergartner who's been trained to push the right buttons and have the person hold the probes, there's absolutely no influence from the operator whatsoever. So for these and lots of other reasons, we love the Asira in the clinic. We love the science on which it's based and the refinements that have brought it into this 10th generation status. And in the lectures that Dr. Kessler and I do, we go much more deeply, not only onto all of these issues for the Asira, but into the incredible science behind the way that bioenergetics function in the body. So we hope we'll see you at a seminar soon. Thanks.